Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be the first lesson in my distant learning art program. And so what we're going to be starting today is the Line City. This is a really fun project. You're going to use a line and value in a really creative way on this project. You're only going to need a few materials. You're of course going to need paper to draw on, but you also can use a pencil, crayons, and markers. And so you can use any combination of those materials. If you just have a pencil and paper, go for it. If you want to add some color, you can use the crayons and markers that way too. But I'm going to be taking you through step by step of this project and then I really want you to bring it into your own and make it a really creative city that you created all on your own, which is a little help for me. All right, so here is a finished example of the Lion City. This is an example uh, from a project version that I did in my classroom with second grade. Uh, I'm going to be changing some things about this for this YouTube version. Uh, but when I, we do this project, we're going to be focusing on two elements of art, and those are lines and values. So let's first talk about lines. Lines are very important because they're really going to help us form our city and make it have the look um, that we want, whether it's water, the road, or the city buildings themselves. All these are going to be made with different lines. Um, Paul Klee was an artist that said a line is a dot that went for a walk. So if I draw a dot on my board here and just take my marker and put it on that dot, but then just move my marker across, it turns that dot into a line. This would be a straight line. It's just moving from one point to the other. Uh, straight lines, you could have different directions too. You could have vertical, which is up and down, horizontal, which is left and right, or diagonal, which is going at an angle, uh, kind of like going up or down a hill. You can also have different kinds of lines. If you're moving your hand while you draw your lines, you can have a curvy line, or you might call it a wavy or bumpy line. You can also have zigzag lines. Zigzag lines are just gonna move back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, giving it points. If you do it vertically, it kind of looks like a zipper. If you do it horizontally, up and down, up and down, up and down, it's gonna look like mountains uh, or maybe even shark teeth. Uh, you could also have swirling lines. For a swirling line that looks like this, easiest thing to do is just start with the letter C, or like you're drawing a letter O, but never close that O up. You want to keep on bringing it around and around and around until it stops kind of in the middle. Because if I ever close that swirling line, then what happens instead is it turns it into a shape, in this case a circle. So lines can also help us make shapes. Um, the other thing that we're going to be doing is value. Value is the lightness or darkness of a color. And this is all done by the pressure of your tool that you're using, the medium that you're using. Uh, and so if I take a piece of paper here, I'm post it right here. So with that, if I use my pencil and I'm going to draw a really dark scribble, that would be a dark value but it's all about the pressure. I'm pressing harder with my pencil when I do that. If I press a little bit softer, it's gonna be a medium value. And if I press as soft as I can, barely touching my pencil on my paper, it's gonna be a light value. And so all that can be achieved even by doing it in all one continuous scribble. So dark, then medium, and then light. What I often see is that people often try to draw really dark. And if they're drawing with a pencil, that doesn't really help them when they need to maybe make a change to their artwork. Because when you go to erase a dark drawing, it just kind of smears that pencil and it doesn't fully erase it very well. But if you do a medium value or a light value when you draw, and you try to erase that, it will erase it completely and make it easier for you to make changes. So I always tell my students, draw light until you get it right. That way, if you do need to make a change to your artwork or you make a mistake, which is totally fine, it's okay to make mistakes and it's okay to want to make changes to your artwork. But if you want to make those changes, you've got to be able to not see what you've changed. So if I was drawing a zigzag line and I changed it into a curvy line like that, and I say I don't want to see that zigzag line anymore and I go to erase it, because I press harder with my pencil, I can still see that zigzag there. But if I draw it more lightly, like that, and then I go to erase that zigzag line, 
because I press softer with my pencil, it's much harder to see that and I can't see what I've changed to my artwork. So that can be very important. In the case of our project, when we make a city building like that, you can use crayons to also achieve value. So I could take this purple here and press harder with it on one side of the building. And as I move across it, I'm gonna press softer and softer, creating a medium value and then pressing even lighter on this side of the building to make a light value. You could also use different shades of that color. I'm sure in your crayon box, you might have maybe a couple different purples, maybe a couple different blues, a couple different greens, whatever color you're using. So I could take, even take a darker purple to really emphasize, really push those darker values even more just by using different versions, different shades of that same color to get it like that. And you can get some really cool effects on your buildings to kind of make them look like they're a little more realistic and have shadows on them. So that's something else that we're gonna be doing on the Lion City itself. And so now I'm gonna use my board here to demonstrate the Lion City buildings. So for this project, you're gonna be mostly using straight lines and there's gonna be a pattern that you're gonna follow. And the pattern, how you do it is really up to you and you can make little changes um, to your buildings as you go, especially if you're drawing with pencil too. But I'm gonna to first demonstrate on my dry erase board. So I start here on one side of the board, actually start a little lower here, and I'm going to go right, up, right, down. And just like that, I formed a building or a skyscraper. And I'm just gonna continue that pattern over and over again. So in your head or even out loud, you can say that pattern, right, up, right, down. Now this building is bigger than this building. The reason being is because when I went up this time, I made that line taller. The width of them are pretty much the same, but the vertical lines I made taller and longer. So that's where you can start to really change your building. So this time I'm going to make a shorter, wider building. So I'm going to go right, up, right, down, 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 right, until I get to the other side of my paper, and that's where my skyline would stop in that row. But you can also do multiple rows in your built in your city to have buildings look like they're behind other buildings. So I'm just going to go up a little bit higher here. I'll use a my orange side of my marker this time. And this time I'm going to add some different shapes to the top of my building. So these are all straight, flat top buildings. Maybe I'm going to add some pointed or angled buildings this time. So I'm still going to follow my pattern though. Right, up, right, down, right, up, right, down. Here we go. We're going to change it. Right, up. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to add a point to the top like that and then come down. And my pattern continues as normal. Right, up, right, down right, up, I'm going to change it again, I'm going to do an angled roof, down, right, up, right, down, right, up, right, down, right, down, right. So again, there I changed just the roof of the building just by putting a little more lines into my pattern. But right up, right down is what you want to keep on doing as you build up your city. When you get to a back row, I usually don't do a full continuous line. This is all one line here in these two rows. But for this last row, I'm just going to kind of put in a few buildings here and there because they're going to be in the distance in the far background. So we've got up, right, down, up. I'm going to add a point here too. Down, up, right, down, up, right, down, up, right, down. Down. Notice my lines never cross over each other. The buildings are always kind of in their own space. But now I've got a good foreground, middle ground, and background. Buildings that are close, buildings that are in the middle, and buildings that are farther away. And just by doing those continuous lines and placing those buildings how I've done it, it makes it look like now I've got a full city. And you can add, of course, other details too. On the project, I'll be taking you through a road, which you might use a curvy line for two curvy lines next to each other, have little marks going down that road to represent the center line on the road, maybe add a little bridge that's next to that, 
doing another curved line or an arch rainbow line. I'm going to do a pattern of vertical lines. Short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long. And then also maybe have a river or a lake down here next to the city just by using some zigzag lines to represent the water. And of course you can do things in the sky. I'm going to use a swirling line for the sun, curvy lines for the sun rays, and maybe add some clouds here and there just with some curvy shapes or make them more cartoony with a flat bottom to them. But again, the city is totally up to you and then you can decorate your buildings with windows and other details, flags, antennas, smokestacks, a lot of different things. You gotta really be creative and use your imagination and figure out how you're gonna bring your city to life. But we're also gonna use crayon on our finished example to add some of that value to, to our project. All right, so let's get started on the actual version of our project. So you are more than welcome to use pencil if you want, since this might be the first time you're doing something like this. You can use pencil that way if you can, uh, if you make mistakes, you can certainly dr uh, draw light until you get it right. And you can always go over it darker with your pencil later or go over it with markers or crayons, whatever you have available to you. But pencil is gonna be able to erase in case you wanna make changes later in your artwork. I'm going to go ahead and not use my pencil. I'm going to use markers just right away so I have a nice bold look to my drawing. So I'm going to start out with a road, and this road is going to be pretty low on my paper. It's going to be down here, but I'm going to need to leave a lot of room for my city buildings. And that's very important, that if I draw my road way too high on my paper, I'm not going to have room for all my skyline, which is the most important part of this project. So I'm going to make two lines next to each other going parallel across my paper. I want to make a slight curve to the, this line. I'm going to use a black marker for the edge of my road. I'm just slowly moving my marker up and down very gently. And then my next line that I do, I follow that same line. So as I draw this line, I'm looking at the line above it and I'm following the same curves I added there like so, so that they stay parallel, even though it's curvy. Now, if you wanna make a more bumpy road or just a straight road, that's fine too. It doesn't have to be curvy like mine. I'm gonna add some short little dashed lines down the middle to represent the center line of the road. Maybe you're gonna add some cars on your city. Maybe you're gonna add a, a bus or something like that. Like I said on the dry erase board, you could also add a bridge. I'm just gonna use an arched rainbow line or a frowning line. And then I like to do a pattern. I'm gonna do two short, one long, two short, one long, two short, one long, two short, one long. One more short right there, okay? Um, then below the road, I'm gonna have a river or a lake. So some kind of body or water. I'm gonna use cool colors for that. Our cool colors are blue, green, and purple. So I'm gonna start with blue. I'm gonna add some zigzag lines that. You could also use curvy lines. You decide how you want your water to look and what colors you want it to look. Maybe you want it to only be green. Maybe you only want it to be blue. I'm going to add a few green lines to some of these zigzags. And I'm going to add a few purple lines to some of the curved ones. And some of them are just going to leave blue, like that. You could also take a crayon and color over top of it. And maybe you're using crayons instead of markers. If you don't have markers, that's OK. This will all work just fine with crayons or markers. Okay. So I'm adding a little more color to my picture. I'm going to use a gray crayon to color in my road. So this is becoming a mixed media project. Mixed media means you're using more than one thing to create your artwork. Maybe you're using pencils at home. Maybe you're using pencil and crayon. Maybe you're using crayons and markers like I am. If you're using more than one thing, you call that mixed media. Now let's get into the fun part. Now let's get into the city. So I'm going to use a few different colors for my city. I'm going to use red, orange, and pink. I'm going to start out with pink for my first row of my city, and then I'm going to go in and do red and orange for my other rows. So again, when you start this, 
you're going to start on one side of your paper and move your way across. Okay. Now, if you're left-handed, unlike me, you can start on this side and go back this way, and your pattern will be left, up, left, down, left, up, left, down, left, up, left, down, left, up, left, down, and so on. Or if you're right-handed like me, I'm going to use the pattern I did in my previous demo of just going right, up, right, down. And again, that forms one building shape. Now I just need to continue that pattern over and over again. And again, you can change roof lines and other things to your buildings. At any point, you just need to stop yourself in that pattern, like I might do. Right, up, right, down, right, up, right, down. Right, up, right, down, right, up. Pointed roof, down. Right, up, right, down down, right, up, right, down, right. I'm to the other side of my paper, so I can't do any more in that row. I'm gonna use a red marker next. So I'm gonna go slightly above here um, on the side of my paper and start my row here. Again, if you're left-handed, you can start over here and go left, up, left, down, left, up, left, down, up, left, down, and so on, okay? So I'm gonna start over here make my first mark, my first line to get my city row started. And then again, I'm going to go up, right, down, right, up, right, down. Notice my buildings are never crossing over in my pink. They're always staying above it. So you might need to work your way across that as you go. Right, up, pointed roof, down, right, up, angled roof, down, right, up, right, down, right, up, right, down, right, up, right, down. Change that roof a little bit there. Right, down, right, up, right, down, right. And I'm onto the other side of my paper so I can't get any further. And then my last row, remember in the last row, I'm just gonna place a few buildings in between for those background buildings. I'm gonna use my orange marker for that. So I'm gonna come over here above this building. I'm just gonna start my marker right here and go up, right, down. You can do another one kind of in the, this area here. Up, pointed roof, down. Up, right, down. Up, right, down in between those buildings. And that looks pretty good. So in terms of my skyline, it is now completed. I've got three rows and that's where I'm gonna stop. If you still have more room, you can still put more buildings in if you want, but I usually like to do three rows, a foreground, a middle ground, and background of buildings there. I'm gonna use a yellow marker for a swirling sun. I'm gonna use my blue marker again for some clouds. Use a gray for some simple birds in the sky, just like little V shapes. And now it's time to decorate. At this point, you can really get creative and use your imaginations. I'm just gonna demonstrate a few things, but then I really want you to take it into your own and make your city look unique. Make it your own city. So for this row here, I'm gonna use pink and one other color. I like to use the main color and then what I call the accent color for that row. So pink is my main color because that's what I use for my outline. So for windows, I can just make short little lines. And these lines can actually come down further than what my skyline really was for that edge there. To make that building look taller, you might also bring these lines down further too if you want like that. I'm going to use horizontal lines that go left and right on this building. I'm going to make some square windows here. I'm going to add a little antennas on the top of that one. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to color in the roof here. I'm going to add some more windows to that building and so on. My accent color is going to be purple for this row. So with your accent color, 
you can just use that however you want. I'm going to outline some of these little L's with little L shapes. Add in more purple here in between. Maybe add a little purple shadow on this roof right there. Maybe this one has a little chimney or smokestack. Use some scribbling, curvy, swirly lines there for the smoke coming out of the chimney. Let's add a few windows on the side there. It's just using lines and shapes to represent that. Okay, I'm going to move on to some in my red row. I'm going to use my red as my main color again. I'm going to use gray as my accent color for this row. And again, you can do this with crayons too. Depending on the sets that you have, you might have more crayon colors than you do marker colors. But again, keep it simple. Use a main color and just one accent color. Color in that roof with the gray. Add a gray line on here and add some gray windows to that building. So on. For this last row, that's where I'm going to use my value with my crayons. I'm definitely going to use crayons with that. So if you don't have crayons, you could use a pencil or you can just color them or decorate them how you've done the rest of your building if you're using markers. So I've got a few different shades of orange right here. I'm going to use um, just one color here. I'm just going to use this darkest orange. I'm going to color it really dark, pressing harder with my crayon on one side of it. And then as I move across, I'm going to press a little bit more softly with that crayon and then even more softly to have it barely touching the paper to make it even lighter. As I mentioned in my previous demo, you might also use a couple different shades of that. So this orange is a little bit lighter than this one. So I'm still gonna give it a dark pressure, a hard pressure for dark value. I'm gonna press a little bit lighter and lighter. And then I'm gonna go over with that dark orange there on the edge to give it that look. So value can really give a cool different look to those buildings in the back. This one's a lot wider, so I'm gonna have a little bit more room here to have that dark value on that edge, a medium value in the middle, and then my lightest value on this side. And then again, you can continue to decorate your buildings and the rest of your picture however you want. If you want to add some patterns to your clouds, maybe a plane flying across the sky, again, some cars on the road, maybe you're going to have some flags on your building, you can do that however you want. Make the project your own. Thank you so much for watching my first art uh, distant learning lesson today. Uh, stay positive, always inspire, show creativity, and always be the best version of yourself. Please be sure to share this video with others, subscribe to my channel, and leave any comments or questions down below for me, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. If you are one of my students watching this video, you can also email me uh, a copy of your Lion City that you made, and maybe I'll feature it in a future video. Uh, have a great day, everybody. Talk to you soon.